Anyway, so more with Penelope coming up. Also, uh, some extra film reviews, and here's one of them, for example. Big George Foreman, which is a biopic of... Big George Foreman. Oh, you didn't make the little Richard joke. Well, I've done it. fine, okay, okay. Is there any point in repeating the joke? He is resin? Okay. He is resin indeed. He is fine. The original full title of this was Big George Foreman, The Miraculous Story of the Once and Future Heavyweight Champion of the World. Okay? I like that. Fine. I am assuming that you knew the story of Big George Foreman. Well, I mean, not really. I mean, I may know the headline stuff, but okay. I don't know the rest of it. Tell me the headline stuff. Well, he's one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. But what did he do famously? He, he beat Muhammad Ali. No, he didn't. He lost to Muhammad Ali. Yeah, okay, one fine. Great, good. Okay. Not Rumble just... in the Jungle. Was that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad about this, right, because I went into this. I don't know anything about sport. I knew who Big George Foreman was, and I'll be honest with you, I knew who he was because his griddles... You know, also does the grill, doesn't he? Yeah. Precisely so. But I knew that he was a, you know, a, a famous fighter and that he had been involved in famous fights. And I had seen, obviously, he turns up in biopics of other... It was so... Um, I was kind of like Wendy Lloyd watching Apollo 13, that I didn't know how this story played out. Um, I imagined that the, the way that it played out because it would seem odd to make a film that didn't play out in this particular way, but I didn't actually know the details, and I'm sorry if everyone's making a collective groan. It's like I genuinely didn't know. Here is... It's, this isn't the trailer. This isn't in the clip. This is, this is the trailer, but it gives you a sense of the tone of the yes, film. Yes, OK. Listen to me, George. You got a punch like I've never seen. But in every battle, the greatest foe that we will combat isn't here. You live one way your whole life. Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. George should change his name from poor man to poor man. <laughs> to hurt. Down goes Granger! What's my name now, fool? Foreman is the new heavyweight champion of the world. Where's all that rage coming from? Don't have any rage. And it becomes all you know. Let's thank God for the food, y'all. I bought the food, mama. George Foreman ain't no new champ. He is the new chump. We gonna get it on because we don't get along. Foreman goes down! Okay. I didn't, I didn't like that uh, little squeaky bit at the end. The tinnitus thing at yeah, the end. that sounded horrible. Okay. So, Chris Davis, who was stealing Judas and the Black Messiah, is George Foreman. Um, obviously, we see him younger as a kid, which we saw in that trailer. But then, you know, as a punchy teenager who's had a, a you know a very 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 sort of poor background, he goes to the Job Corps to improve his future. This I didn't know anything about the Job Corps, but it's a kind of camp thing where you go to to you know to, to get skills. There, he gets into more fights, but he is taken under the wing of Forrest Whitaker's Doc Broaders, who gets him into boxing. He says that you know you've got a punch like I've never seen, and if you could just rein in this anger and do something with it, you could be good. He's then told that he can't compete at the 1968 Olympics because it's going to take him five years to get to Olympic standards. Cut to him winning gold at the 1968 Boom. Olympics. And then parading around the ring, holding a little American flag. This is true. This actually did happen. And then being derided for the fact that, you know, at that time, the the Black Power salute was the thing that you should do if you were at all sort of socially aware because of everything that was going on in America. So he's kind of, even when he wins, he's an outsider, but he becomes an unstoppable winner. He, you know, he challenges uh, Joe Fraser. He then goes on to the Rumble in the Jungle. And then... Like Little Richard in the film we were talking about earlier on, if you're listening to this after listening to part one, he decides that his real calling is the church. And so he leaves the boxing ring and he goes to the church and he sets up a um, a youth club to you know help kids. But then the money runs out and the money runs out and the only way he knows to make money is to go back into the ring. But at this point, he's way too old and out of shape to do it. And yet he goes back to his trainer and says, this is what I want to do. And the guy says, look, you know, there's no way. You're not, you're not the person you were. But apparently he can be the person he was. Now, as I said, everyone knows the story except me. And I'm thrilled to say except, yes, except, me. except you. And the fact that the title, the original title of the film basically told you what the story was anyway. It's directed by George Tillman, who wrote and directed Soul Food in um, 1997, uh, Notorious in 2009 about Notorious B.I.G. He co-wrote the script for this as well. Although, honestly, if there's an auteur of this film, it is George Foreman. I mean, George Foreman is 
the exec producer, and it is definitely his account of his life. It's very by numbers fair. It's a remarkable story told somewhat unremarkably, but terrific central performance by Chris Davis in a kind of a very transformative performance because the you know the, the the different stages of his life. Like I said, there are these strange coincidental echoes of Little Richard of being an outsider, of being somebody who suddenly finds fame in this room that they turn their back on and they are, you know, they are torn between the two the two different areas of their life. But it's somewhat televisual. Um, the fight sequences were, for me were kind of tense because I didn't know how they I didn't know who won. And I understand that if you did, that would be a very, very different movie to watch. So it's a kind of, like I said, it's an unremarkable telling of a remarkable story. There is some fun stuff in it when he, when he's completely out of money and he decides that he has to do adverts. And um, and there's one point in which one of the bank managers goes, you know that funny grill thing you were doing? It's doing quite well. Ah, <laughs> let's do more of those. Because that was, I mean, I'm not kidding. That's kind of how, if somebody said to me, what do you think of George Foreman? I think of the fact that he had that George Foreman grill and it became a huge yeah. success. And the whole gag with it was that it was tilted so that the, the juices ran off so that apparently it was less fattening or Is something. That right? Yeah, that was the that thing, was that, that it had a tilt on it. Who knew? Yes. Anyway, it is very much the authorised version of the George Foreman story. And a cinematic release. It is, but you, you won't lose anything by watching it on a small screen, I'll be honest. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.